What's good YouTube, it's your main man, AB the Hero, back again with a, another video. And in today's video, we're gonna be watching a clip from ESPN First Take, Stephen A. Smith, Max Kellerman, and they will be talking about your boy LaMelo Ball. And is he bringing the NBA back to relevancy this year with his return? Is he bringing the Hornets back to, to playoff contention and all of the good things that we hope for them at the beginning of the season with his return. Let's get into the video. Yeah, I'm with my dude, AB the Hero. What's up? Well, we getting it down in the ball of state, baby. Hey, hey. AB, way to get out of the lane. Way to get out of the lane. What do you thought about that, Jay? I like that. I told you, he's a hustler for us. Let's go. I'm out. <laughs> Alright, so unless you've been living underneath a rock, um, and you ain't subbed to the channel, notification bell, all of that, you don't know that my boy LaMelo has the cash removed, getting his wrist and things loosened up because he will be potentially making a return within the next week or two, allegedly. Depends on like the flexibility and all that in the wrist. Folks are excited. If you over at the NBA offices, you were super excited. If you at home and you you had league pass and you ain't get rid of it, you super excited because you finna start getting your money's worth again. If you had league pass and you got rid of it, you made a smart investment because you was not missing much on the NBA front. But it's time to start re and get your stuff ready because we coming back to action. Uh, and if you like me and you're a creator and you 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 making the content that you're excited about, you are also excited because your boy LaMelo is returning. Now, in this clip from First Take, Stephen A. Smith, they react um, to, to his return and what does that mean for the Hornets? Uh, damn near, what does that mean for the NBA in some accounts? And we'll watch this clip and we'll give our takes and all of that stuff. Like I said earlier, I appreciate y'all subbing to the channel, hitting the notification bell. It is greatly appreciated. You know what I'm saying? The, the, the channel been growing. Uh, we use at a thousand, uh, 11,000 subs. Now let me see. I feel like we got more than that. I, I keep cutting it off before we get that. Hold on now, show it now. That's it. All right, so it's say 11, whatever, man. Go ahead and be 11,000 in 01, you feel me? I'd appreciate that, but here. Now this video dropped yesterday before um, the Hornets played the Knicks last night and caught an L. So the standings and these, these records here look a little bit different currently because now the Hornets are under 500 at 28 and 29. The Knicks are 32 and 27. I'm not sure if, if, if they've moved above the Celtics or not. However, what we do know is that, and this is so crazy to think about, when LaMelo left, the Hornets had just moved into that fourth seed, right? And it was a kind of a crazy time because I believe they were at 500 then as well. But at that point, the only teams in the East who were above, I believe, 500 at that point were maybe the top four teams. So the Hornets were flirting with being over 500 and at 500, over 500, and everybody else was under 500. As you can see, folks got their act right and, and started playing some basketball. So the, the play over in the East is elevated with teams moving past that 500 mark. And, and this, I feel like that's about right, right? Where in a normal NBA year, the Ave, 9, 10, those are the teams that are flirting with 500. Literally everybody in the East was flirting at 500. But here we are now, so let's get into the video. LaMelo Ball has been cleared to resume individual basketball acti activity after a CT scan on his fractured right wrist showed that it's been healed. There's optimism he could return to game action in 7 to 10 days. Ball's probable return comes to Will he? I'm sorry, I couldn't hear. I couldn't hear my do you think do you think Lamelo returning will put the Hornets back on the map? Yes. Um, listen, they're, they're a 500 team now, and I gotta admit, I like the young talent that they have here, and I gotta give props to Gordon Haywood, who obviously departed from Fort, uh, Boston 
Um, he's averaging about nearly 20 a game, 19.6 to be exact on 47% shooting from the field. I give him a lot of credit where credit is due in terms of what he's been able to, to bring to the equation, even though he's missed about 12 games for them right now. That's and we all see Devontae Graham, the P.J. Washingtons of the world, Miles Bridges, a human highlight reel. But LaMelo Ball... Just to, to really touch down on that, right? Because he left off Malik Monk, who was his been who was hooping hooping, and has pretty much reinvented himself, or not I want to say reinvented himself, but has emerged. However, what I want to say is that important thing to really take in into account with this Hornets team is they got a lot of young pieces. Like obviously the 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 Zellers, the Biombos, the Gordon and Terry, those guys been around for a minute and even Malik Monk has just kind of played for a while. I think he bought what three or four years and he came in with Lonzo and, and he's considered a vet. Guys who are about to go on to their second contract type of situations. But you look at some of the uh, top players. Now, Miles Bridges, I, I believe this is his third season. Uh, PJ Washington, I believe this is his second season. You look at, uh, um, you know, what I'm saying a Lamelo is is a rookie right now. You Jaden McDaniel's Vernon, Kier. so they got a lot of of core pieces who I believe that will eventually in this NBA be like names to know, especially the Miles Bridges, the PJ Washingtons last night versus the Knicks showed up and did his thing. So I believe that they're growing and it's starting to look like a team like, yo, wait a minute now. It's, it's, it's something special here. So, so be on the lookout for these young guys because the Hornets are in a cool position where they're not, they don't really have to reinvent the entire wheel it's not like you got a bunch of scrubs you got a bunch of dudes on this team who have shown that they can play and they're developing into something so you add a lamello to that and it's opportunity to go to the next level it also is great opportunity to bring in a one more piece to like set it off right so a, a one vet we need one vet to come in and and really be a person who can you know what I mean? Help add some direction or a guy who can bring up the rear for us type of vibe. 15.9 points, uh, six assists per game, 45% uh, shooting, 37.5% from three-point range, and the dude is just assertive. And this team Fuck believes you. in him. They really believe in him, and they love it. They love being on the floor with him. And I think when you watch these young dudes play with nothing to lose, because they don't have much history to fall back on, I definitely think he can come back and make things very, very interesting uh, for this team moving ahead to the end of regular season and possibly getting into the playoffs. That's a fact. That's not even a, a question. This would be very interesting. I think it sucks, though, that they're going to have to do that whole playing thing. However, it, it sucks, but it's also a, a gift and, and also a curse, right? Because those extra playing games will give him some more time to get reacclimated, loosen the wrist up, like I said earlier, and, and kind of get into it. So, so that is the positive because you don't want your first playoff games to be the games that you are starting to get, except for the, the, the beauty of this um, whole playing thing is that you're starting to make the end of the the season turn into playoff games right so even before you get to the the play-in tournament like you the last six games you really got to take serious in this current setup first let me say this Lamelo max come on just looking like you finna take it somewhere it don't need to go the ball if he gets comes back from this successfully Stephen a plays in most of the remaining games i still think he should be rookie of the year in fact i think coming back off that injury only adds to his case for rookie of the year i agree just that's a fact of mundo I, I really don't think it's a, a debate right now however you're correct if he does come back and play in three or four games have a a 10 7 7 if he can go right there i think he close out the season on top just because Edwards or Halliburton haven't like cemented it, but because what a thing to come back from. It's supposed to be a season ending injury. You're clearly the best rookie. You come back and play out the remainder of the season, play your team into the play. If he does that to me, he's rookie of the year. It only adds to his case. That's the first thing. The okay. second thing is he's already an all star caliber player. I mean, already in this case. That's the first thing. The second thing is he's already an all star caliber player. To his case. That's the first thing. 
The second thing is he's already an all-star. Caliber player. It only adds to his case. That's the first thing. The second thing is he's already an all-star. Caliber player. Now, y'all been rocking with me. I've been telling y'all that for a long time. Should have been in the all-star game. All-star caliber player, yes. I under, we gotta really, cause, cause folks used to be like, man, but he a rookie, but he an all-star caliber player. And if you are all-star caliber player, you deserve to be an all-star. That's what, well, you, you should at least have a shot. And I think that a lot of folks try to discount him. I think LaMelo is in a very interesting situation in which he is very hyped, right? There's a lot of hype there. And because of that, folks are like, ah, let me, let me, it's the cool thing nowadays to not buy into the hype quite yet, right? So it's, it's a cool thing to be the person who's standing on the outside like, man, that's just hype. And not the person who like, yo, I'm telling you what it is because people think you're just hyping it. People be like, but, but these dudes, they just, they on it and they, 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 they fanboy, woo, woo. No, it's just a fact. And so, because folks don't want to seem like they hyping it, what happens is they shy away from things that are just facts. He is an all-star caliber player. And I will say, the one thing that really kept him out of the all-star lineup this year as a rookie was the fact that they brought him off the bench at the beginning of the season. They played really loose with the minutes. And... I, I, I will give the coaching staff a pass, right? Because this is a crazy year, and you don't believe that you're gonna bring a rookie in <clears throat> two weeks before the season starts, and then uh, no off season, no woo woo woo, and then bring him into the NBA and have him be a starter and be an and excel the way that they that he has done. I understand how that might be hard for you to believe, especially with these guys and the way that they talk about. They had no idea who Lamelo was, damn near. Already. And he's a 19-year-old rookie. He is a genius-level passer. And as you pointed out, he can shoot. He can do a lot of stuff. He's assertive. Is he going to put the Hornets back on the map? Not in a permanent way, and I'll tell you why. That's what I'm saying. That's where he started doing too much. Not in a permanent way. We're talking about this season. Is he going to put the Hornets back on the map? In a permanent way, it's not even a question because for the majority of the casual fans, the Hornets were never on the map, right? Obviously, you go back to the Larry Johnson days where, which is probably my, my favorite version of the Hornets and all of that. They were semi on the map back then, but outside of that, we don't even need to have a conversation about putting them back on the map. It's more so about, will he put them on the map? And judging by what is happening right now in the NBA, I would say that yes, the Hornets are on the map. We'll watch a little bit of this, but if he started drone on, we're gonna just go ahead and get up out of here. Because when you have a market like Charlotte, you have six years to win a championship. And then a marketable star like LaMelo is going to want, unless you want a championship or you think you're going to win it the next season, you know, his agent's going to call the team and let Michael Jordan know, you know, you might as well trade us this upcoming season because otherwise we're just going to sign away. You're not going to get anything for us. I can see where he's coming with that. However, there are a lot of examples of, of that not being the case. Of, of folks saying, I need to be traded and I wanna get up out of here. Now, you look at the Giannis who just signed that big stupid deal, right? Um, other markets like that is obviously, I guess you could say Anthony Davis semi did that, but I feel like he was down there for more than six years, but I, I, but but Anthony Davis is probably like the 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 equivalent to what he's talking about. Let me see who else is out here. Um, I guess you got the Aaron Gordons, who is is a, a decent caliber player down in Orlando, who just needed to get up out of there. Um, we seen LeBron do that in Cleveland, but he also came back. So I don't know. He he he's he's on to something here, which is true. Because he's gonna want to play in a major market. And by the way, his game translates to a major market personality game the whole thing and so i don't see now look maybe michael jordan Stephen a is willing to spend money when he thinks he has a chance to win and he'll be able to show that but he hasn't shown that yet and if there's not a team around lamello that can win a championship in the next several years he's not going to wind up staying 
what I do, what I will say, I believe is interesting about LaMelo and this Hornets team is they actually like each other. Now, this matters because I feel like when you look at the interactions that teammates have, right, I could see why LaMelo would be um, like on board with sticking with my guys in, in Charlotte. However, I think that the bag that often gets fumbled by franchises is that you don't realize that that chemistry that you have in these certain players may be bringing and making your key player want to stay, right? Because if they did realize this, we wouldn't even be having this conversation about where's Jello. He would already be there. And you'd be building that cachet and be like, yo, we brought your brother in, we did woo woo. Like, you with us now, you feel me? And and they don't do that and, and they mess that up. I was just watching the video, and we might even do a whole video about this. Is uh, Brandon Jennings when he was in Milwaukee and, and they talk, he's talking about how his first season, he was kind of comfortable, had kind of built a bond with these his teammates and then by the next season, they had shipped everybody out and it threw him for a loop. Like, damn, like, where, what's going on? Like, I don't even understand why y'all doing that. And then that kind of affected and impacted his time in Milwaukee and his career. So I think that the Hornets are in a unique space where they have a lot of guys who gel at some points. There's some guys who you need to let slide, and it's obvious, you feel me? However, um, I think that if they make too much of a shakeup, then you really put in folks' mind that like, yo, it's just a business. This is not a, a family situation. This is not me looking out for you and you looking out for me. So when it's my time to make a decision, I'm gonna make the decision that's best for me as I've seen you do for the, the majority of my career, my time here. And so he won't be put back on the map in any permanent sense. I mean, the Greek freak just signed an extension, but when was the last time a guy at that level signed in a market like that past the original, you know, the original extension, right? Like past seven years. Russ Westbrook. I don't see him unless Jordan changes his ways as an owner or shows, hey, Dame Lillard. Hey, if the door is open, if I see some daylight, I actually will spend, why would he stay there? Max, he's a rookie. Can we deal with that three, four years from now? The Charlotte, the, the Charlotte Hornets, what have they done in recent memory? I mean, just think about that for a second. Here. The fact that the matter is they haven't been in the playoffs. What is it here? Since 2015, 2016 season, they've only had three playoff appearances since getting to the semifinals, led by Paul Silas in 2001, 2002. And so in those three appearances that they made the playoffs since, they haven't been out of the first round. So when we talk about putting them back on the map, simply making the playoffs will do. And not to mention the fact that LaMelo ain't going anywhere for the foreseeable future. He's going to be there at least the next three years. Mm -hmm. So that's what I was saying is that short is this is a short term put back on the map. This is not like a, a, a historic put back on the map. It's not like the way LeBron put the the Lakers back on the map type of vibe. You know what I'm saying? It's not like the way that the Knicks are now back on the map potentially, right? But they've been so bad before, it's kind of like that actually because all they got to do is just make the playoffs and it's like, yo, the Knicks is all right right now because they, they've been bad for a long time. But let's get up so out of here. So what's the problem? Uh, no problem. He just, we're talking about back on Put the map. Put them on the map. I'm saying in a Put them on the map. In, in a permanent way where he's challenging, or at least until the next six, seven years, where he's going to be challenging for championships. <sighs> Max, what you talking about, bro? Well, let me know what y'all think, man. Are y'all ready for, are y'all ready for some basketball? Or nah? Do you think that your boy, uh, LaMelo is going to, uh, well, I think that period, at the beginning of the season, I already said it, like we could see that the fanfare around the Charlotte Hornets is something that we haven't seen in a long time, if not ever. So from that standpoint, it, they're on the map right now. Now, the question is with what is happening in the future, how long can they sustain it? That is the question that Max is, is trying to bring up here. Do we think that is that LaMelo is going to turn the Hornets into a championship contender, especially when you got still players out there like the LeBron Jameses, the Anthony Davises, the Kevin Durant, the James Hardens, and all of these guys 
who are playing in major markets and are drawing free agents and, and top players to them, like can the Hornets rise to that level? I think that that's the question to ask. And, and at this time, I think the verdict is still out. And it really just depends on how they continue to develop these young players and then also how um, they're able to bring in folks with that bread, right? Because right now they're paying Gordon Hayward a hefty price, but is he the type of guy who is going to take your franchise to the next level? I don't know. It's your main man, ABD Hero. We out. No, not peace. Plus one, triple B's. We out.